Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about a new tool. This is Dean DaCosta. We're going to talk about a new tool that works with a tool called Data Miner. We all know Data Miner. Scraper, one of the best out there, quick, simple, easy. You can either right click, highlight stuff, and it'll bring it out to you, not as well formatted, or you can use recipes that are already there that will bring the info you want out, or you can create your own. Now, here's where the new tool comes in. Used to be you have to be able to program, now you don't. Quick, simple, and easy. We're in GitHub. I did a search. I've actually already created a uh, recipe, but I'm going to show you how I did it. First thing I did was the row selector. I highlighted the row I want. I did a shift. It brought the row selector over, and as you can see, all the rows are highlighted. X is what I want. Columns. Once you get the rows, you got columns. So the first column I created, um, as you can see, highlight is name. I'm actually changing this from saying column to say name. Now, as you can see, I already highlighted the name. We're going to do it again. Just make sure. Shift it. And we're going to make sure it's the right name by doing F4. Now, here's the good part. You see this thing over here called data? Let's look at it. <gasps> look at that. All the names we wanted. So we're good. We got that right. Now we're going to go on to column two. Now I want to rename column two. I'm going to rename column two bio because it's kind of what you got there. There are many bios. Not all of them have it, but there are many bios. As you can see, I did the same thing. I would highlight, shift. And in this case, the class was F4 and everything's highlighted. Now let's see if we still have our data. Data is still there. Nice, pretty. Column three. Column three is location. So we're going to change the name here to location. The process I used is exactly the same. I'm going to actually do it for you one more time just to make sure. Location. I highlighted the location in the first one. Shift. It came over here. I'm going to MR3 because that's the class showing. I'm going to go to data. My data is good. I'm good. Next column. The next column is the email. Now, this is really important because, hell, they, hell, they all got email. Yes. And MR3 again. Now, I'm not going to show you because I just showed you. Why do it four times? The next column, though, is the URL, the GitHub URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that. I'm going to put GitHub space URL. Now, getting this was a little more interesting because what I had to do to get to the GitHub URL, which is what we wanted, data is GitHub URL, is I had to highlight it. And I'm going to actually show you this. And I did shift. I got this, but you notice I didn't get anything. Now, over here, I do get them, but I can tell you right now, if I save this, it isn't going to work. I'm going to do the tag. Now, why the A tag? Look down here in the selected HTML. That right there, A, A. So I'm going to do that and look at what we got. Now, let's see, is our data still there? Our data is there. Nice. So what we're going to do now, now, not all of them are the same. Sometimes you'll get an element there, and you're going to have to press it. Sometimes you will. not There's different ways to do it, but in this case, we're doing the A tag. Now we're going to come up here to the recipe. I've already saved this once, and I'm not calling it recipe one anymore. Now I'm going to call it GitHub search, because that's what it is. It's the search. And I'm going to save my recipe. It says save. Now we close data. We close the tool. We're going to go up here to data miner, and here's the ones I've saved. Now we're said GitHub search. Let's run it. See what happens. Now this takes a minute or two, and boom, voila, we got everything we want. We got their name, we got their bio, we got their location, we got their email, we got their GitHub URL. That's what you need. Now, you'll notice I did not use the auto-paginate function. Uh, and the reason I didn't do that is because I have a tool called auto-paginate. So if I would have gone down to the bottom, it would just have created more, uh, it would have created more of, um, of the people. As an example, you see? See how it's already gone to page two? But if you notice, I'll see if I can get close enough without it actually changing on us. I'm not sure I can do that. I've tried that before. This tool is pretty, pretty yeah, it's already done three. If, if you get down there, you'll notice on the right side, there's numbers, one, two, three, five, and then there's an arrow. What you would do if you want to add an auto paginate feature, can't show you, but I will show you where it would go. You know this, the recipe I just created is still here. You would go to the next page, and then you would highlight that little arrow, push shift, find the, and you'd find the exact right class, and that's it. It would be done. Easy and peasy. We're not going to do that here because I don't want to do that here because I've already done it. But that's how simple it can be to do it. Now, I'll show you an example of one that I did that actually already has the auto paginate feature in it in a minute. Uh, again, you save here. Now, if I wanted to create a new one, I would just push new. If I want to export this one, I could just put export. Now, the good part is all your recipes are easily available right at the data miner site right here. So here's my here's data mine. You see all the recipes are here. You can delete them. You can change. You can do whatever you want to do. Make them public. Not make them public. None of mine are public right now. But what I can still do if I want, really, really, really want, 
is this. I can open the data miner tool, use my tool that I just created, use this great tool. And you notice now I'm more than 20. That's because I actually went down. There's actually 40. But you see down here, save recipe. We see down here, it says import recipe. Up here, it says export recipe. If you export the recipe, it'll come out into a file. And then you can import the resume. See, it says import recipe. I could just import it, have a new recipe ready to rock and roll and do what I want to do. Me, I'm happy right now totally happy because the reality is this i'm looking for a job i'm looking for people i can do this thing in, in that area i've got 40 out of that 40 um almost all of them i believe have email addresses so i mean not all of them but a lot of them have emails i'm i'm ecstatic you know most of them have emails you see emails in almost all of these i'm ecstatic i'm good to go i'm happy pig and slop good to go so now i did say i would show you one that actually has all the paginate already built in so you can see what I did with it. Now to do that, I'm going to have to um, get LinkedIn working again, and we all know how that can be. So while it's playing or pretending, I'm going to get rid of GitHub, get rid of that, you know, resources. And it says, oops, try again. So we're going to try it again, and we're going to wait for LinkedIn to come in. I don't know about you all. I get this probably three out of every four times I try to do anything in, the tool, in this thing. But supposedly they're working on it, and we can all be thankful for that. So. We're up here. As soon as it gets done loading, we're going to do, uh, I'm actually going to pick on Java Jason Hadoop because I've been picking on it all day and some other training I've been conducting. And now you can see it's already up and running. And I'm going to show you what an auto paginate would look like, or at least what it would do. I'm going to open up and I'm going to do, see, I have your LinkedIn project, print name, LinkedIn RI folder, LinkedIn search results scrape. Let's do that one. We're going to push it. You're going to see I've got my 10, everything I want here, and I have the start or the paginate. Now, this is what it would do. If you would have clicked at the very bottom, so let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll go back here. If you go all the way to the bottom here of this page, assuming LinkedIn lets you, which it should in about 20 billion seconds. I'm being sarcastic, but it is slow. See this next? That's what that is. You would have if you were creating a... Um, recipe. In fact, let me do this. Let me open up the recipe thing. I'm not going to create one, but I'm going to show you what that particular function would look like as soon as it gets done and opens up. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot. Oh, here we go. Sometimes take a minute. So if I did next page, I would want to go all the way down to the bottom in LinkedIn again. As soon as LinkedIn catches up with me and lets me move. Here we go. Down to the bottom. And I would highlight next and watch. And then you push shift. And watch what happens. And that's the button you're pushing. Now let's think about it. Let's open up the actual thing. Here it is. Here's c.next.txt. That's the function. And what's it come out as? Next txt. Let's see if we press it. What happens? Look at that. The jQuery selector. That's how you do it. That's how you practice the next. And if I want to test it, I can push the button, wait a couple of seconds, and see if it changes to the second page. Now, if it doesn't, that's okay. Because you could might just go up a parent, but as you can see here, it changed. So I'm good. That's how you would have done it. That's how you would have added that functionality to GitHub. But because I have um, auto paginate, it automatically did it in GitHub. It does not work that way in LinkedIn. Nothing works the way it should in LinkedIn. So, you know, that's the way it is. But that's it. Quick, painless, easy. Can't nothing else you can say. Now, if you create a recipe and you have a URL involved, and for some reason when you create it, it looks good, but when you test it. You save it and then you open it up, it doesn't work. It's because of the URL. So you just need to re go back to where you were, reopen the rest, reopen the little recipe thing here. Remember, they, they're there until you, here, I'll show you what I mean. I haven't saved anything. All I've done is next page. I'm going to close it. Now I'm going to reopen it. It basically saves from exactly where you're at. Um, so watch, I'm going to reopen. And if I go here, see it's there. So it saves from where you're at. See it has all the name bio stuff, but I'm not saving nothing. I haven't changed it. I'm not saving it. Um, in fact, I'm going to go over here and push new so we don't have that problem and everything. So it'll save where you're at. You just go open it back up again and play around till you get the right way of doing URL. Everyone's a little different. Here in LinkedIn, you actually need to specify URL and then that's it. Everything else is taken care of. There's a there's actually a class to click. In GitHub, it was in a class to click. It, instead, it was a uh, HTML uh, tag, which was the A. So every, every site's going to be a little different, so you may have to play with that a little bit. But overall, that's it and that's how easy it works. And as you can see, you can save them. I've got so far, so far I've got uh, five or six I think that I've created. I don't, I don't know how many to be honest with you. I've got a Facebook one. I've got the GitHub one I just created. And I got a plethora of LinkedIn ones. Now, I didn't create all these. This one right here, I actually, no, not that one, excuse me. That one right there, I actually saved. 
I found it. It worked really well. I thought, I'll save it. And then I thought about it and said, you know what? It's missing one piece of info I'd really like. So I decided to create my own. Now let me show you what it did. This is the way it turns out. And the thing I didn't like is I didn't like the fact that the name and third degree and all that, I didn't like that. I liked mine. So let me show you mine so you understand why I created this other one because I thought it was a big difference in my opinion. So in my case, I get the first name here, I get their title, I get their location, and then I get the URL. I don't want to know if they're, I don't need to know third, fourth, fifth connection anymore. Now you're probably saying, well, okay, great. Why is this important? Well, this is important because if I take the name field and the LI URL field and stick it in a CSV in the right format and stick it into HireTool I already talked about, HireTool is going to find me email addresses, phone numbers, and all that good stuff. That's why it's important. Unfortunately, um, this is regular LinkedIn, so they, they've done some modifications that make it a little tough to get much more information. I mean, if we go back, that's all that you're seeing. It doesn't show you current company. It does there, but I'm saying it's not showing you a whole lot of extra info. Now, that current company will appear in the scrapeback grade, but some of them, like this one down here, this one has no current company. So how are you going to know? So let's reopen my search that I created one more time, just so you can see one more time. Um, I did keep that. So it says, this says Java Hadoop developer application. So I have companies if there's a company listed there, but a lot of them don't. So unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. Now, if I was to run this in LinkedIn Recruiter, I would use the LinkedIn Recruiter search pull, and it would get me company and all the stuff I want. Be pretty. That's the power of this tool. But it's simple and easy. I mean, literally, this is probably the easiest way I've ever seen to make a recipe for a scraper or to program for a scraping tool. Great tool. Definitely, definitely um, a great add-on to the data mount tool, which is a great tool. Good to go. This is Dean Tacosta.